Hi. Today I'm going to present you my talk entitled Drainage of Subduction Interface Fluids into the Four Arc Mental Evidence by a Pristine Jade Tight Network. We don't know much about what's the physical nature of the plate interface hanging wall because natural exposure are quite rare and because when exposed uh, there is often an extensive vegetation covers that hides the, the structural features. And also there's been often a lot of um, post-formation history that overprinted the early uh, relationships. In, in fact, we don't know much about serpentinization degree of the mantle wedge, the extent of ten tectonic mixing, the deformation patterns, and what are the pathways uh, followed by fluids. So in order to solve this question, uh, I'm taking you today to the polar Urals in Russia uh, at the base of the CMQ massif. There you have a thick pile of ancient um, four arc mantle wedge uh, made of dunite and Hasburgite that has been thrust on the top of uh, metamorphic rocks, high pressure metamorphic rocks, including ophiolites and mostly continental crust. And there, about one kilometer above the main Ural thrust, you can find uh, a several hundred meter thick serpentinized network that contains lenses striking to the northeast of Jadeitite. These lenses, um, they occur also within the serpentinite networks and they appear as uh, several meter thick uh, dikes which are whitish in the center and become greenish on the, on the rings at the contact with the host serpentinite. Inside, these uh, white dikes contain fractures and diffuse area that are uh, greenish and that clearly show uh, evidence for hydro, hydro fracturing. Also, there are some dark domain that we call here dark granophiles that comprise amphibole and phlogopite and that occur randomly within the white ground mass. And also there are some fractures that are texturally late that comprise uh, phlogopite, sodic amphibole and chromium rich jadeite. So the core of the white domains uh, locally contain paragonite crystals in an albite rich matrix and we found uh, an occurrence of jadeite corona forming at the contact between these two crystals. Uh, this is interpreted as a former transgemite that has been put uh, at high pressure, explaining the formation of jadeite, the contact. There are also some fibrous veins um, that exhibit some uh, oscillatory structures. Also, these oscillatory structures are found in hybrid wall um, of the dike and uh, which are composed of mostly magnesocatophorite, phlogopite, and we find also uh, cosmochlor forming around chromite. So this is a simplified view of the dike with the white jadeite body in the center that contains dark granophiles. And on the rims, you have this um, greenish color, mostly because of green jadeite, and these fractures and this phlogopite uh, in the form of metasomatic black walls. So we, we find a lot of evidence of uh, multiple fluid influx events as shown by the periodicity recorded in uh, clinoperoxene, for instance, as you can see on this map, where there is a clearly dendritic-like pattern uh, in the center of the, the veins. Also, the clinoperoxene exhibit interesting um, stripes that are made of jadeite and omphacite and are interpreted as formed after exolution of a primary uh, clinoperoxine composition. This is the shape of the solvus, so most likely the original composition was somewhere there, uh, which means above 500 degrees, because this is the shape of the solvus at 500 degrees. In the dark granophiles and hybrid black walls, one can see, for instance, uh, the pristine Parkazite crystals that are ringed by neboite 
that grew in equilibrium with clinochlor, omphacite, phlogopite, jadeite, and titanite. Um, some of these early amphiboles in the dark granophiles are sodicalcic and they contain numerous uh, chromium oscillations. So overall, the story can be simplified that way with a pristine dike that contains paragonite, plagioclase, uh, and possibly uh, pargazite. This was the, the, the feature before the high-pressure free rock interaction that led to the formation of jadeite, omphacite, magnesocatophorite, richterite, and at a later stage, a kermanite, glucophane, and niboite that all grew in equilibrium with phlogopite, and clinochlor and zircon. And the, all the system has been only marginally affected by retrogression. So we can plot the projection of minerals and uh, whole rock composition to show where the transgemite is plotting, where the whole rock uh, jadeite composition are, uh, namely mostly along the joint between jadeite and diopside. And this is the region where most of the amphiboles uh, would plot, very close to the amphibolitite or the dark granophiles composition. Um, we can gain some insight on how this feature formed, watching at mineral chemistry and trace element geochemistry. For instance, this is the texture of the white jadeite matrix that is infiltrated by a nonfacite bearing crack, along which phlogopite is also growing one can see that the rims of most of the crystals are enriched in calcium. So we are evolving towards a more emphasitic composition, also enriched in chromium, in yttrium, and one can see interesting features in the oscillation of zirconium with cores enriched in zirconium, then depletion, and then enrichment again along the fracture zone. So overall, most of the white jadeite core are relatively depleted in trace elements, while the jadeite rims and omphacite are, are rather enriched. We can also understand better how this sequence of events formed by studying uh, the chronology of, the, of this different mineral uh, generation. For instance, in the jadeite uh, vein core, from a previous study, we know that the zircons were dated using uranium lead. Uh, at 409 and 404 million years, uh, which is slightly younger than the argon-argon ages we got from uh, the pargazite in sample PU3. Also using argon-argon, we got the whole range of ages from 406 to 382 using amphibole and phlogopite in various samples from the dark granophiles and phlogopite schist. And we got slightly younger ages, about um, 400 million years to 395, using rubidium strontium dating. So we interpret these sequences of events as first uh, an episode of dike crystallization that has been recrystallized into white jadeite. And then after crossing of the antigorite stability field, while you are cooling the subduction environment after initiation, you start metasomatizing your rock making it greenish, associated with the serpentinization of the host. And this all occurs during the stage of oceanic subduction that preceded continental subduction. So the conclusion is that jadeite veins possibly formed shortly after subduction inception, while the mountain wedge was not serpentinized yet. And lately, there's been some potassium-bearing fluid that partly invaded the system. So uh, using previously published grids, um, on the, the phase relationship in jadeite, we can conclude that this dike possibly formed at subsolidus of about 415 million years, and then was transformed to white jadeite at 410, and then recrystallized uh, on the rim as green jadeite at about 395 million years during long term cooling of the subduction gradient from. Uh, perhaps 15 degrees to kilometer down to 10 degrees per kilometer. So the most important feature here is to remember that the bulk of the jadeite body here formed at high temperature above 650 degrees. And this kind of departs from 
uh, other statements relative to uh, the, the systematic low temperature at condition associated with uh, jellyite formation. So this is the model we propose. We first have a peridotite where you have a crack and where alkali-rich melts are infiltrating, forming the dark granules, and then uh, using the same network, a transgenetic melt invades the system, uh, forming the dike as we see it in the field. That has been lately at subsolidus condition transformed into jadeitite by the infiltration of sodium aluminum rich fluid. And then uh, while the system was cooling after crossing of the antigorite stability field, the dike has been partially recalibrated and uh, leading to the formation of logopite, jadeite, sodic amphibole, and green clinopyroxene at the contact with the serpentine ice. That's the structure as we see today in the field. So these features are very well recorded in the Pusiaka locality that provides really very interesting insight on, on how the jadeitites form and how a subduction history uh, along the hanging wall can be recorded uh, in that setting. So I leave you with the conclusion and uh, I thank you for your attention.